Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course aspects of biochemical engineering. In the last uh, lecture, I tried to summarize that uh, what are the uh, things I am going to cover in this course. And uh, again, let me tell you that you know initially we will be, we'll be discussing about the microbiology and biochemistry of the biological processes then it will be followed by what are the different byproducts that is available in the market. And then we will discuss about the stoichiometry of the bioprocess, which will be followed by reaction kinetics and the thermodynamics and reaction kinetics of the chemical process. Then we will discuss about the reactor analysis and uh, for designing the different reactors. And then we will discuss the enzymatic reaction kinetics both using free enzyme as well as immobilized enzyme. Then we discuss the cell growth kinetics, substrate utilization and product formations and, uh, and, and uh, this will be followed by transport phenomena of the different biological processes. And, uh, and ultimately that we are going to discuss that uh, what are the different downstream processing we have in this uh, particular uh, biochemical process. And, uh, and, in, and, and also, I, I discuss about the what is the details of the course content. Now, today I am going to start my lecture. I start with microbiology because microbiology is a very important topic because I told you that biochemical system, such a unique system that is from one substrate we can get in number of products and here we want to change the microorganism. So, details, little bit detailed information of microorganism may be useful to all, uh, all of you. Uh, so, so, if you look at this uh, first, uh, let us uh, discuss about the characteristics of the living system, because uh, how it differs from that of non-living system. The first, uh, first thing that we have with this system they are very sensitive to the environment because I can give the example that if, uh, if, uh, if we are also living beings and if we increase the temperature of the room at 45 degree centigrade or 50 degree centigrade, we cannot, we cannot stay here. So, immediately we will we'll try to go out of the room. So, similarly that same thing happened with the microorganism. They are very sensitive to the temperature, sensitive to the pH, sensitive to the environmental conditions. So, this is one very important properties of the living system. The next is the acclimatization. What do you mean by acclimatization? Because but I can work uh, at 45 degree centigrade. The if, uh, if slowly, slowly uh, my room temperature increases uh, after several days and now my body will be, will be uh, we will withstand that particular temperature. So, a time will come, but we can walk in this. I can give an example, the astronaut, those who are going to the uh, exploration work in the, uh, the, that in the moon and other planets, that you know that uh, they have, they have to, they, 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 they are supposed to withstand the high temperature and so they, they pass through all this acclimatization processes. I can give another example. Suppose we have an infection, and we in the regular in the day-to-day -day life, and we take some antibiotics, and same infection, if it occurs afterwards, the same dose of antibiotics will may not be withstand because your organism are quite withstand with that particular dose. So, you know, acclimatization is a very common property of the living system. Then metabolism, because I. I told you in the last class that you know in the living system, we have metabolic pathways, and through these metabolic pathways, we 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 get the different type of metabolites. As for example, uh, we all know that uh, that glucose is a so is a kind of energy source, 
and glucose when it is passed through this uh, m down myro pathway it produces a pyruvic acid and then it passes through the TCA cycle it produces it is that carbon dioxide and water. So, in process we develop some kind of um, uh, that energy molecules like ATP, NADH and that we use as per our body requirement. The another important property of the living system is the reproduction because they reproduce that uh, this is the major difference between the living and non-living system. Living organism they can re reproduce but non-living system cannot reproduce. And another important property of this is the waste generation. In, in, all living system they generate some kind of waste uh, that is the, the kind of property of the living system. So, now question comes what is the classification of this uh, living organisms? Uh, whatever microorganisms we have, uh, first let me tell you what do you mean by microorganism. Microorganism that means those are microscopically visible because if you want to, uh, if you see under our naked eyes, we will find just like a powder. But if you see under the microscope, then we will see that what is the size and shape of that particular organism is. That is we call it microorganism. And microorganism broadly it can be divided into two different uh, class. One is, uh, one is called prokaryotes and other is eukaryotes. Now, prokaryotes you can see that uh, in the prokaryotes we have archaea we have bacteria and uh, this is archaea this is called archaeobacteria and bacteria we have eubacteria because most of the bacteria fall under this category and this archaea is usually available in uh, in some uh, waste water treatment process or some uh, lagoon and other things it is available now eukaryotes we have you carry out with the planta fungi any malia and potista. These are the different types of, of that kingdoms that we have in this particular eukaryotes. In eukaryotes appears to be the bigger, uh, little bit bigger uh, the size as compared to prokaryotes that I shall discuss in the later on. Now, question come of that you know, uh, the, what is the difference between all these classes that you know, I talk about the bacteria, then I talk about the archaea, then, they, then we talk about the eukarya. Now, say if you look at the cell type, this is called prokaryotes, this is also, this I told you, this is also prokaryote and this is eukaryote. Now, if you look at the size of the organism, this is in these two classes that in you know, a bacteria and archaea, more or less they are same. This is 0.5 to 4 microns. That is, uh, and in case of eukaryote, this is more than 5 microns. As I told you, this is little bit of bigger cells. Now, if you look at the cell wall, that the cell wall mostly contains the peptidoglycan, that in case of mostly in case of bacteria. But in the archaea, we have uh, that present or lack both. Uh, we have this both types is available. The in case of uh, the um, uh, that uh, eukarya that is you have absent or made of other materials. This is the this is the difference that we have. The lipids in the membrane, the fatty acid present link with the ester bond, the iso <coughs> presence link with the ester bonds and fatty acid present link with the ester bond. This is more or less same. Now, protein synthesis, this is methionine and this is uh, for formyl methionine and here we, we have methionine that, uh, that means in this uh, due to presence of the methionine, this is impaired with the antibiotics such as chloramphenicol. that means it cannot withstand that. And, uh, and uh, that you know that uh, and uh, in case of uh, this uh, archaea, this is impaired with antibiotics such as chloramphenicol, but it is most uh, in case of eukaryotic eukarya, this is most uh, most not impaired, 
by the antibiotics such as glomphenicol. This is how they are basic difference. Now, here I, uh, I want to say as the genetic material is concerned, it contains the small circular uh, this uh, uh, chromosomes and here also small uh, circular chromosomes and uh, plasmids, histone like protein presence and here complex nucleus, this is very important with with uh, with uh, with more more than one large and linear chromosome and histone is present. Now, if I, if you look at the RNA polymerase, it's very simple, and both the archaea and eukarya, this we have in complex in nature. If you look at locomotion, this is this has simple flagella gliding and gas vehicle, vesicle. Then here the archaea, you have simple flagella gas vesicle. And in case of uh, eukarya, this is you have complex flagella, cilia, legs, fins, and wings. And habitat is the long range of uh, 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 this is in the environment is largely available, and usually only the extreme environment the archaea is available, and uh, wide range environment is also this uh, eukarya also available. Typical organisms are eubacteria and cyanobacteria in case of bacteria. Methane producing bacteria I told you and hollow halobacterium <coughs> and also extreme thermophiles that, that uh, includes in the archaea. And in case of eukarya we have algae, protozoa, fungi, plants and animals. This is the broad class, this is the difference of the different organisms that we have. And now, if you look at the definition of microorganism, microorganism that exists as single cell, what we call unicellular cell, and also it can be available in the cluster form, that this is clustered as well as the single cell, also lacking of cell wall, because all this is called acellular, because there are the different types of cells are available, organisms are available. And what I mentioned, they view only with the aid of microscope. This is, a, this is the definition of the microorganism that we have. Most of the prokaryotes and some of the eukaryotes fall under the category of microorganism. Now, Anthony Van Liu Un Hook, this is the father, he is a father of microbiology, first discovered the microbes form by using the compound microscope. So, now what is the diversity of the microorganism? If you look at the different microorganisms that is available in, in the art in the different forms. As for example, bacteria, they have both the good and bad type. Now, what do you mean by good and bad type? Because this is good and bad type. What I, what I want to mean that, uh, you know, this uh, bacteria or any living organism can be, uh, we can classify it into two ways. One is called pathogens, another is non-pathogens. Pathogens means they are harmful to the human uh, human health, and non-pathogens are not harmful to the human. The good, we 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 mean this is non-pathogens. They are not harmful to the human health, but bad type means they are harmful to the human health. Now they are single cells and eat what's the, what what around them, and anti antibiotics um, are a bacteria killing boom because different type of uh, 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 antibiotics can can kill the bacteria and also it is vitamin C uh, kills the bacteria. These are the different characteristics of the bacteria that we have. Then if you come to the virus, uh, virus really that has little role to play in the byproduct formation process, but uh, this, uh, is, this comes on the classification of microorganism, but it is only bad because we do not find anything good in it. Bad means they are mostly the pathogenic, they are parasite, parasite means they grow on the host organism and then their vitamin C kills. Then fungi, this is largely used by the industry, mold and yeast. This mold and yeast is largely used by the industry. I can give the example that for citric acid producing industry, we use the aspergillus niger for the production of citric acid. Now, in the penicillin, penicillin production industry, we use the penicillium chrysogena. Though so these are the, this we consider as a mold. But if you consider yeast, it has also several applications. We have food yeast and we have fodder yeast. Food yeast has some nutritional value. Particularly, if you look at this baker's yeast, 
that is largely used for the bread making industry and fodder is mostly used as the animal feed algae now it is a lot of application in the industry that uh, this is this is used uh, as a food as a as a source of protein as a uh, for the production of biodiesel and uh, also for it has some kind of therapeutic values now we have this protozoa also doesn't have much of in still application as per bio industries are concerned they are multicellular and found everywhere the archaea they survive in the extreme climate environmental condition if you look at the size and shape of the microorganism as i and this size this is mostly varies that is uh, if you look at this is point 0.01 microns to 22 microns this is the average size that we have this is the microorganism that we present now let us uh, give you some kind of pictorial view of this microorganism now this is called eukaryotic cell i told you the size of the eukaryotic cell is much higher this is 15 to 20 microns virus is a smaller very tiny particles this is 20 to 200 nanometer and in your prokaryotic cells uh, the bacteria usually varies from 1 to 3 microns so this is the eukaryotic cells only the specialty is that they have defined nucleus what the prokaryotic cells they don't have a nucleus and this is the virus how it looks and this is the prokaryotic cells how it looks now here we have given some uh, elaborate picture this is the virus and this is the cyanobacteria the cyanobacteria has a lot of industrial application particularly for increase the fertility of the soil because they have nitrogen fixation property and and this also some cyanobacteria also as used as a source of protein now you have fungi i told you that fungi has also lot of application in the industry that um, that i i have given the example of citric acid and penicillin producing industry then we have algae algae has also we have is used in different places for the now it is uh, the biodiesel is considered as a very good source as a substitute of the uh, fossil fuel so the, then and algae plays the very microalgae plays vital role there and then bacteria also uh, we have uh, several applications particularly streptomycin production uh, we we use the bacteria streptomyces for the production of streptomycin so we have bacteriophage this kind of virus that we have now let me give you the detail information of this uh, different uh, organisms so if you look at the bacteria that uh, mostly abundant this is available in the nature and it is the single cell prokaryotes it is called single cell prokaryotes and then it displays the variety variety of a uh, shape and size this is 0.5 to 5 microns now you can see it this is cocci cocus it looks like you know a spider you can see like this and cocca is small uh, that you know spare spherical shape we we have diplococci I means the two spherical shape is there you can say then we have coffee bean uh, shape in pairs and this also there this is rod shape it looks like like this and cocca bacilla it is uh, it looks like this now we have i want to tell you streptococci this is largely available this is they are they are in they are in a chain formation so you can see it here this is chain formation and this is the micrococci or streptococci this is a cluster of cells that uh, that you know spheres that we have the spore forming you can see that inside this there is the spores the spore there they can withstand the adverse conditions and this is the streptomyces mode like structure it is it looks like that and this is the vibrios it is, is like this and this spy, spirilla this is looks like under the microscope and uh, it looks that like this is the spiro cat this comprises of peptidoglycans this is the in the cell wall no cell membrane found in the organelles and can be differentiated for gram positive and gram negative gram positive is the thick and gram no is thin on the basis of the cell wall composition and are used find in the on natural habitat examples are e coli streptococcus then we have uh, 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 
uh, staphylococcus, then Clostridium, etc. The bacteria, uh, we have tremendous uh, lot of bacteria available in, uh, in nature and they available in both the forms, uh, both pathogens and non-pathogens. Now, archaea, that if you look at archaea, is the more, uh, this is the ancient uh, microorganism, this is a very old microorganism. And I told you that uh, this is available under adverse circumstances. It is uh, the single cell prokaryotes. Cell wall does not comprise of peptidoglycans and found in extreme environments, that is the high temperature and high salinity region. That is the high temperature we have uh, because uh, we have um, we have different uh, uh, hot spring is there, there this kind of uh, organisms are available and they have similar size and shape as bacteria. However, they possess genes and metabolic pathway close to that eukaryotes and there this is, this is how it available in the different uh, places. This is hot spring, this is uh, thermo proteus that is available, helibacterium, they, they, they are available in the high salt containing uh, water. The, the, this is the, this is the archaea, this is how it uh, differs from the, that of bacteria. Now, if you look at the fungi, and fungi has lot of application as per industry is concerned. And now, these exist in two different forms. One is we called uh, this, one is we call yeast, and there is mold. Uh, this uh, now they they may be single, they may be multicellular, uh, eukaryotes, and multiply by budding. Uh, I can I can show you this budding if you uh, that you know that if if you look at like this, the budding is like this. This is like this. There's the yeast. Yeast uh, we have mostly. Uh, we have this budding character. This uh, so but this is the speciality of the yeast. So we have I have I can give the example of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is uh, this has the budding. If you see under the microscope, then uh, then the cell wall comprises of glucan, mannan, and chitin. This is the cell wall composition that we have here. Uh, here also you can see the budding here. The here we have budding and. Uh, here we have budding, you can see that, and cell wall comprises of glucan, mannan, and, and chitins. And I here I want to point out one thing. I work with citric acid industry, and uh, uh, we produce citric acid by using <coughs> Aspergillus niger, and Aspergillus niger uh, cell wall contains chitin, and uh, and this we, we use for the production of rough quality of paper. Now, this is free living and widely distributed in the nature and growth and um, I, can, I, can, I can tell you that uh, Aspergillus niger is mostly available in the rotten citrus food and also if you look at Penicillium chrysogenum, it is available in the, in, the, in the bread because in the bread you will find green spores. If you, if you, if you, if you find out the old breads, sometimes we find some kind of fungal infection it looks like green color. This is mostly <coughs> mostly the penicillium species that we have. Then they, their growth rate is uh, comparably slower as compared to the bacteria. I can, this is usually find out on the basis of a doubling time. Doubling time is the time required double the cell population. I can give the example that in case of bacteria, the doubling time is about 15 to 20 minutes. But in case of yeast cells, it is about one to one and a half hours. And in case of fungi like, like Aspergillus niger, it may be a couple of hours. So they, they have symbiotic relationship with other organisms. Uh, symbiotic way they love each other. And, and examples are the Saccharomyces cerevisia, largely used for alcohol making industry, also for Baker's fermentation process. The microsporidia, and Canidia. Canidia uh, that is largely used as a uh, fodder yeast. Now, microalgae. If you look at microalgae, this is uh, for this is photosynthetic, that uh, prokaryotic, and and this is called cyanobacteria. I told you this is largely used in the 
uh, for the has a biofertilizer they have the nitrogen fixation property because and this is largely used for the plant growth and eukaryotic algae microorganism that is also available this is unicellular species existing individually or in chain or groups you can you can see here this organism they can have individually like this and they can have available in the chain also here you can find out that that uh, this is how they they are available in the nature their sizes <coughs> can be range a few micrometer to few hundred micrometers they are rich in carbohydrate lipids and protein i told you this is largely used the, uh, for the production of uh, biodiesel one advantage with the microalgae uh, that their growth rate this is also a photosynthetic organism and their growth rate is much high as compared to the plant system so so it is a lot of people lot of uh, industry they want uh, this uh, microalgae they are exploring microalgae how it can be used for the betterment of our society as for example i told you the replacement of um, that you know uh, uh, that fossil fuel by using biodiesel also it can be used as a source of uh, protein because uh, because i know in india and also in several parts of the world they consider spirulina i can give the very difficult very typical example that is largely used for in the form of tablet in the form of food in the form of drinks that is used and this has not only the food value that has some kind of therapeutic values the typically it is found in the fresh water and marine system examples include the chlorella uh, cnidesmos and the nostoc these are the different uh, organism that is available with us I, I so uh, in conclusion i want to say that today we, i i want to discuss in this particular lecture i want to give a broad classification of the microorganism uh, i told you that whatever the living cells we have broadly it can be classified into two types eukaryotes and prokaryotes and what is the, what it includes all the all the microorganisms available in the, in the nature and microorganism basically we mean the organisms whose morphology is can be visible under the microscope we cannot see under the naked eyes if you see under naked eyes we will find they are just like powder and and they have because this organism can be broadly classified into two types one is called pathogens and the non pathogens we mostly in the biochemical product formation mostly we consider the non pathogenic organism for the product formation as for example bakers is that is used for leavening of bread largely used in the bread baking industry we i have given the example of aspergillus niger that is used for the production of citric acid penicillin chrysogenum that is used for the production of penicillin so there they have lot of use and also this is used for the treatment of waste water with different archaea species that can be used for the treatment of waste water mm, thank you very much